morning, Miraza. How are you? Good morning, Lady Mary. I'm, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm fine. Long time no see. <laughs> yeah, it's good to see you on IGTV. No, thank you so much. I've been really thinking about all the work we've been doing together. And I just want to say thank you so much for everything. But at the same time, you know, we've been having conversations and now we had the website going. Uh, you know, we, we're trying to make sure we get the boys and girls to have access to content. This week is really important because we are celebrating the, you know, International uh, Mental Health Day. And uh, you and I have been talking about mental health for so long. And I just want us to have a very quick conversation to see how you're doing um, and, and see, you know, if we can share, you know, for the day, how things are working together. So, uh, but how are you? You okay? Yeah, I'm doing well. I think, you know, at one point, because we've been in quarantine for so long, I think without knowing it was taking a toll on us, um, on our mental health, but I've been seeking help, uh, being productive and, you know, seeking help. And so I'm doing well. Thank you. How Very about good. you? I'm good. I've been doing the same, you know, really, uh, I, I thought the, the coronavirus will, you know, take a little bit of less time. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, I've been going, keep doing my running every morning. Um, and then, you know, talking to friends and, and, and making sure very focused on the work because it's been really hard with zoom calls, not being able to hug people, no, not being able to meet people has been really difficult for me. So, uh, you know, mental health is really is really affecting so many people. You know, it's affecting over one billion people across the world. Um, and I think on and this Saturday uh, we're going to celebrate. Uh, and I think that it's not a little celebration, but actually it's you know really creating an awareness around it. And I think sometimes, especially if you come from the culture we come from, it's very mm -hmm. difficult to, to talk about it. So I think one of my question to you is, uh, you know, I know you've been dealing with so many stuff, but how, what does it mean to you? What, what does mental health mean to you? Mental well-being, what does it mean to you? Mental well-being doesn't mean you always have to be happy, but it means even on hard days, I know my worth and strength. Um, it means having faith, you know, and in my heart and also in my mind that I'm hundred percent capable mm -hmm. to fight through the storm and to get to the other side. It also means to always have hope, you know, despite yeah. the circumstance, um, because a lot of things happen in our lives that, you know, bring us down, but mm -hmm. always having hope that we can come out on the other side. What about you? What does it mean to you? I think just like you said, really, um, you know, being able to to be grateful. I'm I'm very mm -hmm. grateful that um, you know every day um, is a different day. Um, you know, mm -hmm. last year I was in a I was in hospital at this period of the time, just before going to Kakuma actually to meet the girls. I'm grateful that I've got a, a very good health. Um, you know, and so for me, mental health is being able to have the, you know, basic vital uh, things that you need, you know, friends and people you can talk to. There are millions of people who don't have friends and mm -hmm. even someone to check in with. For me, that's what well-being means, really being able to have food, have the basics, uh, water, a warm house, you know, friends you can call to check in if you upset. Because at the end of the day, you know, as I said, me was all the time. You can't control uh, people, but you can control yourself. You can control your emotions. You know, um, I'm lucky to live in a place of the world where I can go for a cry in the morning. You know, you know, go go for a you know go for just to connect with myself again. So, and and that give me energy during the day. Um, and and that's how the, what that's what mental health really means for me. And speaking of, you know, the basic needs, right? Mm -hmm. Like having a shelter, having food, you know, having well-balanced mental health, mm -hmm. I think is actually a basic necessity for human beings, but something that we don't address very much, probably especially in our cultures. Mm -hmm. um, and that needs to change, I think. Yeah. In Africa, for example, you know, mental health is taboo. Uh, in, in my country, in Senegal, where I was born, we don't talk about this. And we have so many people who don't have connections. They have, they have families, you know, you have mom and dads and, you know, your surroundings. But sometimes when things, when there are pressure, you know, money issues, you know, sometimes mental health for me is also linked to how you see yourself. The era of social media, information is so quick. You know, everybody wants to be seen. Everybody wants to be mm -hmm. heard. 
And sometimes, you know, people feel left out. And I think that's why I wanted to ask you, you know, in your culture in Japan, you know, I, we don't want to generalize, but how do you get support or awareness around mental health in Japan where you are now? I have to say it's almost impossible to get help、uh, for your mental health in Japan because I think, in some ways, it's, it's the same as、uh, your country and your upbringing.、Uh, mental health is taboo in Japan, even though, sadly, the number of people that lose、uh, in the struggle with their mental health is so high.、Um, I think we sort of desensitize ourselves. Um, so that we don't have to face the truth, like the hard truth. So, for, for myself, speaking from my own experience, until I was about 24, 25, I didn't even have words to articulate the pain and the struggle that I was carrying、um, my whole life. And only after I started talk, talking to my friends in the US, because mental、mm-hmm. health in the US, I, I think the awareness is like they're, they're more progressed in that area. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So being able to talk to them about you know, my stories and my、Your、concerns. Feelings,、yeah. and, mm-hmm. Exactly. And I finally was able to find words to describe what I was feeling. And also, I realized that, okay, maybe I should seek help.、Mm-hmm. I didn't even know that. The help was possible for、yeah. whatever I was feeling in, in that、mm. moment. I think in Japan, the limitation of、mm. access. It's a closed society、help. as well, you know, it's a closed society.、Mm-hmm. It is. Like,、society. we don't talk about personal things.、Yeah. You know, we, we, we have that issue to start with. People don't open up. You know, it's always about keeping the harmony. Um, which is great, which is beautiful, but there is no real connection. And I think there is this craving for real connection. We're not taught to seek and, and you know, hold on to it yeah,、uh, yeah. in a way. So that creates a lot of mental health issues here as well. I think people are feeling very lonely, you know, even、yes. though we're economically we're very successful, you know,、mm-hmm. compared to a lot of countries. And innovation where- as well, technology and everything. Exactly. But when it comes to human connection, when it comes to mental health,、um, I think we're very isolated and lonely.、Yeah. You know, in the UK, in, in the UK、uh, where I am now, you are right. You know, loneliness. I think you and I had a podcast where we discussed、um, with a Japanese monk, actually, where we talked about,、mm-hmm. uh, you know, solitude and loneliness. And I think we need to differentiate in, in this IGTV, you know, what is solitude and what is loneliness. And I think that. Having your own space is absolutely crucial, you know, because、mm-hmm. you can have your creativity and everything. But I think being lonely really creates sadness. And sometimes,、mm-hmm. like I said earlier, it's linked to、uh, self esteem,、uh, not being able to belong in anywhere. And I think the,、mm-hmm. the word belonging is really important. My mental health started to get better when I realized I had a community.、Uh, I could send a message to my friends、uh, to bring them to my house or,、uh, you know, just to have a conversation about. You know, mundane things.、Um, and、mm-hmm. then my mental health started getting better. But belonging to a community, knowing that there are people out there for you, you can call at 3 a.m. in the morning,、uh, you know, you can give a hug to. I think for me, those small, you know, things are really, really important in, in dealing with your mental health. I 100% agree with you on that. I was actually talking to one of my close friends last night and I told her thank you because she was one of the, the, the only people that. I felt safe enough to reach out to when I was、mm-hmm. struggling、um, a lot、uh, earlier、mm-hmm. this year. And she just messaged me you know, during that time. And she was like, you know, it doesn't matter if it's 2 a.m., 3 a.m., I'm here. Just give me a call. I don't、mm-hmm. want you to be alone because you're not alone in this.、Mm-hmm. Um, and that helped me so much. And my other friend, he, we've been friends for 30 years.、Um, he's one of my best friends. And Um, I was sharing some of my stories, and he told me, I don't want you to hurt alone. Because、mm, mm. we will experience pain, you know,、mm. regardless of how many friends we have. There's、yeah. always going to be tough things happening in your life. But、mm. he told me, I don't want you to hurt alone. I'm here for you. And oh, I cried. I was like, mm, oh mm. my goodness. You know, and yeah, of course, like having access to, you know, different resources, like, you know,、uh, a counselor, a therapist. It's, 
I think it's great and yeah. we, we need that. But at the same time, like on day day to day basis, um, that sense of belonging, like you said, it does help us to push through and move Absolutely. forward. So um, speaking of mental health, I know you've faced many challenges and struggles um, since you were very little. Mm -hmm. And my question to you is, how have you dealt with mental well-being over the years? I mean, that's a very good question. It's just like what you said earlier. Um, you know, I just trusted the process. I didn't also have the vocabulary in the language of mental health. Um, like I said, in, in my continent, uh, especially where I live in, in you know, we're very happy people. We surround ourselves with people, but I didn't grow up in, in Africa. And so I grew up, you know, in the southeast of England where it's cold, um, you know, people here, you can't just talk about your emotions all the time. And I didn't know that I actually had mental health. Um, you know, I was I was dealing with struggle of missing home, uh, having identity issues. You know, being having been abused uh, sexually as a young girl. So all of this trauma accumulated in my brain. And so I think the way I dealt with it is, uh, you know, going for work. Going for work, I've got a very special place where I go every single morning. I've been going there for nearly twenty years now. I seek therapy. You know, I seek therapy. I had a therapist for a very long time. You know, somebody I could um, speak to. You know, I think the reason why we also need to talk about is therapists because people think uh, having a therapist or going and seeing somebody is taboo. And it's like, you know, you're, cra you're crazy or it's not, you know, because your, friend, your friends are emotionally linked to you. And your, your mentors, um, you know, want to see you do good. Uh, but I think seeking a therapist, they are not emotionally linked to you and they can tell you the truth. They can give you like, uh, you know, a framework, um, you know, to, to, to deal with your day-to-day -day activities. You know, I think we need to differentiate how to deal with your friends and how what to say to your friends. And but also seeking a professional uh, behavioral therapist or psychotherapist and somebody who is qualified to actually help you. Uh, for me, that I, I made a differentiation very, very early day. And I, I went and see really a, you know, a, you know, a psychotherapist, somebody who could help me deal with my emotions, uh, you know, to, not tell me all is gonna be okay, but help mm -hmm. me cope. It's like, it's a coping mechanism. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. you have to have this coping mechanism where you feel really, really anxious. You feel really like, you know, I'm not good enough. You know, I'm, things are not great. Uh, and this person is there for you. And then also, you know, being able to go every single morning for, you know, half an hour, one hour walk where I can sit down and cry and be grateful, look into nature. Uh, those kind of things kept me going and being consistent as well, because I don't do it just like a couple of months and give up. I've been doing it every single day. Uh, just for half an hour to reconnect with myself. That's such a great point about, you know, having a routine, right? Like having something that you can always go back to. It's almost like this pattern you have. Doesn't matter yeah. what's going on in your life. You go for a walk and that kind of like resets your mind, resets your heart so that you can, you know, go back to that, that center, you know, mm. what, what you have like right here. And also what you said about therapists and not stigmatizing seeing a therapist, such an important point. Like I, mm. I try to mention that I'm seeing a therapist to my friends, you know, in, in a very casual, you know, conversations um, as much as possible, especially with my Japanese friends, because, you know, when, when I say, oh, uh, tomorrow I have a therapy session in the morning, most of the time, like people look at you like you're broken. Mm. Um, and that's we're all not broken, true. Actually, we're all broken. Well, we people. are all broken, <laughs> but at the same time, I'm not seeing a therapist because yeah. I'm broken. No, um, no. It's almost like going to the gym for your heart. And yeah. yes, at first, when I started seeing a therapist, I really need a help, and yeah. um, I'm very grateful that I found help there. But the reason why I continued seeing him uh, for the next six months, and I, I still go back, you know, every Sunday, is because I have, like, I want to build this mental strength. So mm. next time when hard things happen, I have a strength to push through. In, in Africa, it's the same It's the same as in Japan. When you say you're seeking therapists, people look at you like, hmm, are you okay? Mm. You, know, mm -hmm. you know, but I think, I think you're absolutely right that we need to really make sure we, we talk about therapists and, you know, destigmatizing mm -hmm. in a way that people seek help.
Your friends will mm-hmm. always tell you what you want to hear because they care mm-hmm. about you and they love you. But your therapist is there to give you a framework. And that's why I'm, I'm asking to all of the girls we have and, you know, whoever, just go and see someone. Just tell them about your issues. And because they are qualified in helping you, they, that's why they call psychotherapists and, you know, behavioral mm-hmm. change people. And sometimes you have the same behavior, like drinking mm-hmm. alcohol, uh, you know, or, you know, prosecuting, not doing what you need to do. They can help you actually. And that's, that will affect your mental health because if you don't mm-hmm. know what tomorrow looks like, um, mm-hmm. you know, you, you're not creative enough or, you know, following a certain routine, you're not healthy. Those kind of small things, it, it, it builds up. It's like Legos. And I remember, you know, Except I lived in in so, so much violence and and you know and and hurt and physical violence and emotional violence and verbal violence because those those violences we don't differentiate uh, and an emotional violence especially if you don't have money mm-hmm. you don't economically don't know how to deal with your issues uh, physical mm-hmm. violence that many girls are living with domestic violence and verbal violence people who says really mean things saying really mean things can affect someone's mental health and then many girls uh and boys across the world are you know have verbal violence people who abuse them on social media uh you know things like that that affects your mental health as well it has really affected me personally my mm-hmm. you know, people who were really abusive to me verbally physically emotionally mm-hmm. you know bullying me um those kind of stuff affects you uh mentally so you need to identify that and when mm-hmm. you see that that is happening just walk away uh mm-hmm. or or talk to your therapist about it and being able to verbalize it to say it mm-hmm. also you know helps you uh you know understand because if this is real am i making it up is it true Right. You know, it's, it's really important. Yeah. That's such a great point because until I started seeing my therapist, I, I did have doubts um, in, in, in myself um, thinking maybe I'm just like making all these things up, you know, like all these sort of like this trauma that I was carrying with me. And I did share about, you know, different stories with some of my close friends or someone I trust, but more I talk about it, I started doubting myself like, okay, maybe I'm creating all these fake stories. And when I shared the story with my therapist, I realized that, okay, I I wasn't making it up. Um, But until I did that, I I did have doubts like, oh, maybe I'm like just victimizing myself. I didn't want to, but. But many people do think you're victim. Many people do think that when we have mental health, we actually, we are victims or we're seeking attention. Uh, many people think like that, and it's not true. Actually, it's, it hurts. It hurts to to be when you are confused. You don't know what to do, you know. And then I think it's very important you said that, Miwaza, because many young girls, and I, I was going to ask you this question. Many young girls across the world get victimized. That's why they don't say anything. You know, that's why they don't talk. They don't say how they feel because no one is actually listening. Nobody, nobody's listening to them. So I think one of my question to you is, you know, how do you deal with your own mental well-being? You know, what are the routines you do, especially being a Japanese, living in a Japanese culture? But what are mm-hmm. the tips you can give to our girls today? Um, I think I've been so blessed and fortunate that I speak English. I have an access to resources and help that most people here in Japan don't. So I'm very fortunate in that way um, because I think Where did most you learn English then? Where did you learn English? In Japan from my friend. So I've been seeing my therapist for the last six months, um, every Sunday. And he's an amazing therapist. I, I see them online. In English? Do you do your therapy yes, in English? Yes, we do oh, it okay. in English. Yeah, but you know, like finding that therapist for me was very hard because I've been looking for a therapist for the last uh, six years or something. Finding someone who understands my culture, someone who speaks English, because some of the stuff that I experienced or I want to share, I can't do it in Japanese. I think it was like a this coping mechanism, you know, finding my safe language almost, um, Mm -hmm. because a lot of trauma comes with Japanese language to me, you know, like you were saying about like verbal abuse. And so for me, I had to detach myself from, from that particular language. Mm -hmm. And so I, I studied English. So now I can in a safe space in my own mind can think about, um, different things, explore different ideas. 
like a lot of the stuff that um, are connected to mental health for me, I can only articulate them in English, which is very, you know, um, fascinating. It's good though. Me. It's fascinating. Yeah. Because I mean, English, so English is your safe space basically. Exactly. Yeah. So mental health issues does damage your brain. Like scientifically it's proven that, you know, if you have depression, if you have this, like your brain's damaged, but like, if I'm thinking in English or if I'm speaking in English, it's almost like using this brain that's not damaged. Um, you are right. I, this is such an important point you just made there. I, I remember, so my, my verbal violence and what really affected my mental health is the, my language, Wolof. And so everything that has been into my cassette, into my brain is what I heard, you know, when I was like young and it's still mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. until now when I, when I really feel the lack of uh, self-esteem, mm -hmm. it's fascinating what you said, because the tape keeps running mm -hmm. in, my, exactly. in, my, in, my, in, in my dialect. Uh, and when, mm -hmm. when I speak English, I'm very confident. So everybody's like, oh, Mariam is really confident. <laughs> but mm -hmm. actually, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the little insecurities come from mm -hmm. when I actually express the, my feeling in my language. It's very fascinating mm -hmm. you said that. Mm -hmm. It's really amazing. I do want to learn how to express myself again um, in Japanese. Because I think it's important. Well, it will help the, for the Exactly. Yeah, like yeah. reclaiming, you know, yes, um, what you lost. Uh, so oh, I do wow. want to do that. Um, but, you know, speaking of safety, yeah, I do have the language that's like safe to me. Also, um, I surround myself with, you know, like you can see in my room, like I surround myself with pictures of the people that I love. It's a nice um, house, by the way. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. So that way, like I'm constantly reminding myself that I am loved and I'm also capable of loving other people. Mm. Um, it brings me back a lot of, you know, good memories, joy, hope, um, meanings of life, really. So I try to create, you know, a safe environment for myself um, where I feel safe. Um, mm. so Talking about safe do. spaces, um, you know, the one of the, the stuff we work with the girls on in having safe spaces, as you know, our girls are refugees and, you know, they, they had had trauma. The trauma they have is definitely not what we what we had as children and as young girls. But I think the trauma our girls have lived war, they witnessed war, domestic mm -hmm. violence and, and so many things, you name it. So I, I think that it is very important what you said um, about making sure we create safe spaces for girls, you know, online mm -hmm. now because you know, COVID-19, we have to do everything, you know, online. But also, I think, you know, when we are on the ground in Kakuma, mm -hmm. in favelas, create safe spaces where girls can come and, up and express themselves with, with love and, and, and know that they're surrounded by people who really care about them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, that's, I think, one of the first things that I noticed about I Am The Code, uh, the girls um, in Kakuma refugee camp, you know, when we got together to do different workshops, I witness that they feel safe when they're being part of I'm the code. Mm -hmm. um, when, when, and when you feel safe, that's when creativity happens. That's where, where love is born. That's where friendship is born. And so I was like, oh, wow, this is the I am the code impact. It's not just about teaching the girls how to code, but creating a safe space for girls where they can express themselves, where they mm. can explore different ideas. Um, so thank you for being a trailblazer in creating <laughs> safe space for the girls. No when I was growing up, I didn't have a safe space, as you know. I learned uh, the Quran uh, in, from 7 to 11. And, uh, you know, those spaces are meant to be safe. You know, schools are meant to be safe. Places of learning are meant to be safe. And unfortunately, that wasn't safe for me. And that has affected my mental health uh, in all these years. And so I'm always traumatized when I enter a place of learning because I'm always like, is this place safe for the girls? Uh, and so I think that as we talk about, you know, the World Mental Health um, Week, we also need to look into you know, spaces. You know, uh, and 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 really put a safeguarding mechanism. At I am the code. We are so strict with compliance and making sure we create safe spaces where uh, whoever is around the girls uh, is checked. Uh, you know, they are they are kind people. They have empathy and compassion. They they loving people. Uh, they understand struggle and trauma. 
Uh, and and for, for me, this is so important that I am the coordinator. It's, it's at its core. It's so paramount that we bring the good people uh, you know, to, to be near the vulnerable girls we have. I agree. You know, there are places that are supposed to be safe, but like it's not safe, you know, like family could be family members that are hurting you. I grew up in church um, all my life and, you know, even religious, you know, places and communities, it's supposed to be a safe space for people to come and be vulnerable or seek mm -hmm. help. But in a lot of cases, it's not anymore. Yeah. You know, um, so what we're doing at I'm the Code is, is crucial um, for the girls' future, I believe. So speaking of the Kakuma girls, um, you always tell me that Kakuma girls inspire you. Has the Kakuma girls also inspired you to be strong mentally? Yeah, whew, that's a very uh, that's a very deep question. Um, you know, before I before I went to Kakuma, I had my own trauma. Big, deep trauma um, mm -hmm. that I've been, you know, carrying, but, you know, really trying to figure out who I am and who I was as a, as a human being. You know, sometimes when you're in, in a traumatic world, you, all, you always think you are the only person that's been through this trauma because, and I think this is why I like exposing people to different realities. That's why I like bringing you to Kakuma, for example. So I loved you and I traveling to Kakuma to meet the girls because I knew they will inspire you and they will change your mindset. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when we come back, we don't become, it's all about me. It's like, mm -hmm. actually I have other people who've been through so much and we're not, we're not denying what happened to us, mm -hmm. but they can, they can help you as a, as a reference point. And I think when I enter Kakuma, being a young global leader from the whole economic forum, have all the privileges of connections of, of high level people I can have access to. But I went to Kakuma and I was exposed to these girls for the first time, it's a long time ago, 200,000 people in the refugee camp, Africans. I look at their eyes, you know, look at their teeth and the beauty, the, the dignity. I was like, wow. And they told me about their stories, you know, trauma, gender-based violence, and things that, you know, it's like human beings, what are we capable of? And it's unbelievable. And I look at their eyes and I, I saw, as you said earlier, hope. I said, these girls have just changed my life. No matter what I do now, I'm going to have to be with them. Because it, it, they actually cemented my view in humanity because I was telling the whole world how hurt I was as a child for all of these years. And when I saw them, I saw they're also hurting. They're in a refugee camp. The future is, is in the hand of other people. They came from war zone countries. No mom and dad, orphans. They have one meal a day, one uniform. But beauty, hugs, they give you hugs. They are so amazing. They changed my life. So. Definitely. The Kakuma girls are not just now part of I am the code, but they are the code. And they are definitely the reason why I'm fighting every single day to, to make sure that they don't end up like me. At the same time, they can have a better future. But also I expose people. Mm -hmm. I, expose, I expose the human, the humanity failure in how mm -hmm. we have failed society, we have failed people. Uh, you know, you coming from a different society, I come from a different society where we did not have to suffer, that it was unnecessary. Mm -hmm. and what is happening right now with these Kakuma girls is absolutely unnecessary. And someone has to talk about this. It's unnecessary. Mm -hmm. They did not have to live in that camp. But we have to hope and work with policymakers, and government, investors, our mm -hmm. friends, our mentors, people like you who take your time to travel with me to be exposed to something that is totally different they have changed you. So that's why we're doing at this international, uh, you know, day of the girl, but also celebrating and, and making aware of people to understand, you know, the mental health, you know, world mental health day is to tell the, tell the world, you are sad, you're upset, you're not feeling good. We understand. To answer your question, definitely have changed my life for sure. They have. Thank you for sharing, you know, the empathy and compassion component. And I think um, for me to 
meet the girls in Kakuma refugee camp was was so important to me. What is the what is the one thing you think about when you think about the Kakuma girls? Dignity and radiance. I think that's what comes to my mind. Um, very sincere, very passionate. Um, yes, they've been through pain and they are still going through pain. Uh, mm. And I think it's a very unfair situation that they're still in this situation. But what I saw first was dignity, pride. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my goodness, these are some strong women. <laughs> I want to be like them when I grow up. <laughs> They have that effect That's, on you, right? They do have that effect. They do. They yeah. definitely inspired me to to be a better human being, um, for me to really explore different ways that I can be part uh, of the change um, in different ways, I think. We could use pain in different ways. You know, the, there are reasons why we both through, went through what we went through, and it's not... You know, what I've been through is not something that I can compare to, you know, what the girls in Kakuma are going through. Mm -hmm. but, you know, but yeah, that's an important point you, you mentioned. But I always say that, you know, being traumatized and being in pain is not a competition. You know, exactly. It's, it's, yeah. it's really, it's really not a competition because we've been through and we need to respect this. We need to respect what people have been through. And I think this is where we fail. A society to to talk about mental health and talk about trauma because it's always who had it who who's the person who had it tougher who's the person who had it harder it's not that it's not about you know, I'm the most traumatized person so let's talk about me no it's not about that it's, we all go through difficulty your story my story their story everyone else's story the one billion people across the world are going through different challenges. And that's why we need to, that's why the empathy piece is really important. We need to respect people's feelings uh, and listen to them, what they, what they feel and not compare or compete. Because your, what, what hurts you hurts me. Right, it's, it's, right. It's, you know, what, you, know, you have blood, blood runs in your veins, it runs into my veins. But what we need to do is, is share, is love each other and, and, and compare, not compare, but relate relate to each other and say, you know, Miwaza, I understand how you feel. Mariam, I understand how you feel. And I think this reciprocity that I talk about all the time is very important. When someone gives you something, you say, thank you. When you receive something, you say, thank you. And, the, and then the mental health for me, this is what is important, the reciprocity, the sharing, uh, that is your heart. And But many people today don't have this. And when we talk about trauma and uh, mental health, we always think, well, refugees had it tough. Let's focus on them. But we don't talk about the Japanese girls or the Senegalese girls or girls in the UK or you and me being adults struggling. We really need to also think about how policies are shaping the language of mental health. Because this is also is distracting us from investing into safe spaces, as you said. It, it's stopping us invest into conversations like this. It's stopping us invest into resources. It's stopping us actually, you know, talking about it because we all feel it doesn't matter. You know, you have to be traumatized and come from war zone country to, to be traumatized. So I think we also need to really think about policies and how do we talk about mental health and invest right now because it's absolutely urgent and COVID-19, will create uh, you know, a, a traumatized generation who are economically left behind, women who are sexually abused, emotionally abused, uh, they have no more money, no income. COVID-19 has you know, changed the life of everyone. So I do definitely think that we should think about, it's not a competition, it's something we need to do now. We need to invest now into young women and girls and boys all across the world and make sure we all talk about it in a, in a, in like we said, in a very sincere way. You know, like pain, we could, we, we, we shouldn't be comparing anything. Um, but instead using the experience to relate, like you said, you know, I, I like, I'm here for you, even mm. though like, I don't understand exact pain you're going through. I'm here mm. and I am not going away, you know, and I think that's what we wanted, right. Growing up, 
for someone to say, Hey, I'm going to hold your hand as Mm. you walk through this. Um, as simple as that, that's what we need. So in this, you know, time of the history where everything is going out of control, really, you know, politically, um, economically, also there's this pandemic going, Mm. where do you find hope? Lady Mariam. <laughs> where, was it? Um, where do I find hope? I think I find hope in in knowing again is that you know this is temporary. It's gonna it's gonna go away. You know, I, as I always said in my talks, and and for me every day is a is a different day. Uh, yesterday was a very hard day, <laughs> and today is gonna be different. And tomorrow, of course, will be different. You know, I can control today but I cannot control uh, what's happened yesterday and what's gonna happen tomorrow. And so I find hope, I think, by living on a day-to-day basis, you know, um, every single day is different. Uh, You know, connecting with the right people, making sure that I have the right minds. You know, that's why I love Mm -hmm. doing this with you because, you know, not only you and I, you know, met randomly, Mm -hmm. but, you know, we have forged a very uh, respectful, and, and professional relationship and, and friendship. Um, you know, we did a, you know, we've been working together since since March uh, and having the right friends is really important. Uh, people who can hold you accountable. Uh, mm-hmm. People who, you know, sometimes when things are not going well, people who can tell you that's not right, you know, mm-hmm. uh, because sometimes mm-hmm. I think we also need to be out of our bubbles, seek advice, seek mentorship, mm-hmm. Uh, seek counsel uh, because Mm -hmm. we don't know it all. We don't have all the answers. Uh, You know, as Maya Angelou said, when you know better, you do better. But when you don't know, you don't, you know, you keep making the same mistakes again, 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 and and it becomes insanity. And I think what we see today in the world of politics is is, is almost insanity because we are forgetting the real people who are suffering on a day-to-day basis. And we're just focusing on you know, the new cycle of the media every single day is changing. And this is also affecting our mental health because we don't know what to do. Leaders are not behaving the way they should behave. Um, and so I find my hope really in uh, having good friends, good mentors, uh, creative people I work with, uh, you know, amazing people who are willing to help and support, uh, who hold me accountable if I make mistakes. Uh, you know, and, and love and, and share and, you know, and, and become compassionate. And also the Kakuma girls give me hope because I know the work we're doing at I Am The Code is a service to humanity. I know that. I know 10 years from now, the world will thank us for, uh, you know, helping the less fortunate uh, gain digital skills, mm-hmm. uh, you know, learn how to code, uh, take care of their well-being. Uh, we have well-being classes at I Am The Code, so it's really important the girls understand about their bodies, their mind, the planet, uh, you know, uplift their speed, as you said, get the right friends. Uh, so all of that we're doing at I Am The Code and those those give me really uh, great hope. Yeah, I- How um, about you? It's, it's the same <laughs> for me too. You always ask great questions. You always ask these great questions. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. I find hope in, in knowing that I have amazing friends. I I find so much hope in my friends. You know, they they called me randomly like earlier today too. This this friend of mine, he just like called me and he said, you know, like I was like, hey, what's up? Like, is it about work? You know, what's going on? And he was like, you know, I just called you because I missed you. <laughs> like something like that gives me hope. Yeah. Mm. You know, just like knowing that there are people that cares about me and mm. cares about mm. my existence as mm. much as I care about them. Mm -hmm. Um, because I care about my friends deeply. Also, like you said, you know, this, especially this past, you know, few months in quarantine, Mm -hmm. working with you on I Am The Code Project Mm -hmm. gave me a sense of purpose that I am doing something useful, bigger than myself, Mm -hmm. meaningful, uh, that's impactful, that gives We've me done hope. a lot, Miwaza. We've done a lot together. <laughs> we've done a lot, yes. We've done a lot. I mean, sometimes I look at the stuff we've been doing. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The amount of content we've produced in the last couple But I think, months. I think your, to, to your point, it's really meaningful and, and impact. Thank you. Really. We did, a, we did a great stuff together. And you have a great team now, so. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. 
So Miwaza, you know, it was so lovely to talk to you. Really amazing to talk to you. And I always love Thank talking you. to you with our IGTV. So do you have three tips you can give to the girls and boys as we close the mental health uh, week? Always remind yourself every single day that you are enough. Um, this is something that I do uh, every day too. And something that I should be doing more, um, reminding myself that I am capable of love I am worthy of love, um, that I am enough. I, I think that's one um, advice. The other one is try to create a safe space for yourself. It doesn't have to be one big house. It could be a very, very tiny little, you know, space where you have, you know, little pictures of your family or, you know, favorite things, you know, just like a little corner where you can go to when things are hard and feel safe. It doesn't have to be a room. It can mm. be a little corner um, where you have something that reminds you of happiness and joy and love and uh, comfort. Um, have that tiny space. What about you? Do you have uh, tips and tricks for us that we can follow? I think, I, I think you said it all, to be honest. Um, I think the tip, like I said, go for work if you can. Uh, be grateful for what you have. You know, sometimes it may be too much and you may not see what you have. And I, was, I think the last thing is be grateful with the people who paved the way for you. If someone has given you an opportunity in life for you to change, to grow, uh, always be good. Because there are so people around the world who don't have this. And I think this human connection. Mm -hmm. For me, the reciprocity, the exchange. Mm -hmm the, you know, me being able to call you, you being able to mm -hmm. call me, me, you us sharing, that is a recipe that many people don't have. So don't take it for granted. Mm -hmm. And this could help with your mental health because if you can exchange with another person, another culture, your mental health will be better. So I wish you all the best for the World Mental Health Day. At I Am The Good, we are here for you. Your mental health is paramount. If you want to seek advice to Miwaza, to myself, or to the entire team, please come and check us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. We are here for you. Thank you again, and we wish you a safe day. Thank you very much, Lady Mariam. I'll Thank speak you. to you soon. Bye, Miwaza. Have a good day. Bye. Ciao, ciao.